This is Unit 1C. It deals with basic ideas about waves and it gives an overview of their features and some of their uses. So starting at the bottom we've got the idea of energy and energy can be transferred via waves. So waves transfer energy but not matter. Now if we combine that with the idea of time and the most common unit of time of course the second we get waves per second and that concept we call frequency. Now we're dealing with a family of waves, seven in all, and we call that the electromagnetic spectrum. They have certain things in common, but they also differ. So the things they have in common is they all travel at what we call the speed of light, but really we should call it the speed of electromagnetic waves, and they can all travel through vacuum, a vacuum as well, unlike uh, sound waves or water waves. Now, in terms of their basic description, we have two distances that we're interested in. The first and most obvious is the wavelength, and it kind of says its name. We can think of that as a peak-to-peak -peak distance, or trough-to-trough -trough distance, or crest it's sometimes called. But actually, it could be any two points that are similar, or similar phase, as we would say. Then we've also got the amplitude, which is the height of the wave. Now, this is from this dotted line in the middle, the undisturbed position, a very common mistake is to think that it's this total height and examiners love to ask you that so make sure you understand that it's just this bit here so we've got these seven waves let's have a look at them in a little bit more detail uh, over here we've got radio which is the longest wavelength and therefore the lowest frequency so frequency is waves per second so they're very long they travel at the same speed and so let's have a look at communication now this is a huge block here that stretches across quite a few different wave types as we can see. So radio is used for, well, as its name says, radio broadcast, and we've got the old-fashioned FM or the more modern uh, DAB, and the D stands for digital, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later on. We've also got TV signals uh, that also use radio waves and also wireless, so using your, your router at home or in a cafe talk about wireless hotspots. Moving on to uh, microwaves then, they're also used for communication, so your mobile phone uses microwave signals, uh, also we use them to communicate with satellites, and microwaves are also used for cooking. So here we've got a, a different amplitude, a much higher amplitude or a more concentrated amplitude, but it's the same wave nonetheless, typically a few centimeters is the, the wavelength of microwaves. Moving on to infrared then, we know this is as heat, sometimes called heat waves. It's used in a remote control to communicate with the TV, again at a low amplitude. It's used in optical fibers, which we'll look at in greater detail as well. And it's also used for imaging, the kind of imaging the police use to find criminals and, and many other uses if someone's trapped in an avalanche and so on. It's also used in cooking, so there's more conventional cooking that we uh, understand cooking over a fire or something like that. We're going to use infrared waves there as well. So visible light is the one we're most familiar with because we can detect it ourselves. Fairly obviously it's used for imaging, it's also used for uh, optical fibers and it's used in lasers uh, which actually stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation but the word light is the, the L there. Moving on to the more dangerous end of the spectrum, and all of these uh, three here have the danger that they might damage cells and they could cause cancer. So ultraviolet is used for tanning, it's also used for uh, security uh, writing, where a particular pigment turns ultraviolet into visible. It's also used uh, to make whites whiter. Then we have x-ray, which we're quite familiar with as a medical imaging tool. And then we've got the highest energy of all, the highest frequency. We've got gamma, which is also used for medical imaging, and it's also used for treatment. So it it's, um, can be um, can cause cancer, can be used to detect cancer or diagnose it, and can also be used to treat it. Which sounds contradictory, but isn't if we understand it properly. Let's have a look at uh, behavior in a little bit more detail. So again, starting at the bottom, we've got the idea of direction here, and a lot of the behaviors here are to deal with uh, a change in direction. We've got the concept of waves again and um, we've got our equation here which we alluded to earlier we've got the speed equals the frequency times the wavelength and if we look at the top here wait till it comes out here again we've got our carriage and if we know the number of carriages per second and we know the length of the carriage we could work out the speed of the train so if we know the length of the carriage 
and we know there's three carriages we could work out the speed and waves are no difference if we know this length the length of the wave we know there are three per second then we could work out the speed of the wave uh, 30 meters per second in this case so let's get back to this change of direction so we've got three kinds of change of direction we've got at a surface at a boundary and at a gap now the one at the surface we're most familiar with because we see it every day in the mirror so we've got the wave front coming in and it's reflected off and it's a, a corresponding angle. If you imagine a, a line down here, the angle of incidence is going to equal the angle of reflection. Now a very similar sounding word is refraction, but here we're dealing with a boundary. So here we've got uh, light or some kind of wave moving through something like air, something not very dense. We hit something denser like glass and it slows down. We see that the um, wave fronts are now closer together and it's also changed angle and we think of soldiers marching into a muddy field or something like that which will explain the the change in direction lastly then we've got a gap so here we've got a wave front and it's reaching uh, two gaps here's a wide gap and a narrower gap and in both cases we can see there's this change in direction but with the smaller gap or rather when the gap is similar to wavelength that is that there's a greater change with stronger diffraction going on here and a lot of um, uh, receivers uh, aerials and so on uh, take advantage of this so three types of behavior reflection refraction and diffraction they sound very similar but we have to make sure we understand the difference and we also have our equation here which if we think of the train analogy makes sense and if we know the number of waves per second we know the length of the wave, we can also work out the speed of the wave.